Good afternoon, everyone. This is today's roll call for today's City Charter Commission meeting, August 1st. William Bill Edwards, Chair. Here. Judge Kenya Johnson, Vice Chair. Present. Benny Crane. Present. D. Franklin. Dory Henry. John Herring. Present. Daphne Jordan. Present. Cecily Cole Martin. Present. Suzanne Alcoberry. Present. Marshall J. Taggart, Jr. Present. And our newest member, Ms. Amelia C. Walker, I believe she's uh, stepped away for a minute. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, you have a quorum. Okay. Prior to roll call, after roll call, obviously, you had a matter that you wanted to take care of in terms of uh, clearing up. Yes. Yes. And, and actually, we need to wait on Ms. Walker. Uh, she's one of the the persons that needs to be sworn in. So why don't we swear to one individual? Okay, you can do it. We'll be swearing in Mrs. Daphne Jordan, and uh, Dory Henry is not here as well. He needed to be sworn in, so I guess at this time, Ms. Jordan, if you would stand and raise your right hand, please. And I believe I gave you a copy of your, your oath, and could you repeat after me, please? I state your name. I, Daphne Jordan. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I would truly discharge. The duties as a member of the City of South Fulton Charter Commission in all matters which require my official action to the best of my knowledge and skill, I will so act as in my judgment will be most conducive to the welfare and best interests of the entire city. I further solemnly swear that I am not the holder of any unaccounted for public money due this state and that I am otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution of the United States of America I further solemnly swear that I have been a resident of the city of South Fulton for the time required by the Constitution and laws of this state and the charter and code of ordinances of the city of South Fulton. So help me God, or so I affirm. Congratulations. Congratulations to your picture, man. We'll, uh, we'll do Ms. Walker when she comes in, Ms. Clerk. But let me digress a bit, and uh, we're going to have invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Benny Crane. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, we thank you for this day and for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for those that are assembled here today to do the work of this great city, those that are watching online and those participating in the audience. And whatever role we, we take today, God, bless the works of our hands. And we pray that, the, pray that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. We give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Mr. Crane. Let us stand for the second reading. Move. Second. 
properly moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's have a mini dinner cream before we wrap. Raise our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Just raise your hand. Yay. Yay. Is that unanimous? Sir? That's unanimous. Okay. Uh, next item is approval of the 7 19 2020 meeting minutes. Motion. Wait, I, I thought you just approved the, you the minutes. The agenda. I, heard, I thought I was approving the meeting for the, the minutes for the agenda. The minutes, yeah. From so the, that's what you had. You said, you said, you said right. <laughs> yeah, you said the I think it's approval of the meeting agenda. Yes. That's what yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we just did the, uh, my understanding was the minutes from the previous meeting. Yeah, we did six before five. I mean, we right. Oh, did we? Yeah. We're yeah, I, I have comments for six, too. Uh, Mr. Clerk. Why is what in that in that in those minutes? Why are the time by people's name as to when they got here? Um, that's uh, in terms of uh, recording for Robert's rules and, and the clerk profession uh, to record when uh, folks arrived. In the case of votes, so if someone votes and they weren't present, it will show that what time they got there. So if there's a unanimous vote before someone gets there, I have to record that to show that that person was not present. In 20 years, that's a new rule, man. But, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. I'm sorry. What do you make a reference to, uh, Mr. Uh, it's on your in your minutes, uh, Mr. Crane. Did you notice the attendees? That uh -huh. they're right. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I was here before 611, but it's okay. 601. All right. <laughs> uh, let me say this. Last meeting, we decided how, what we were going to do and how we were going to do it in terms of uh, conversation about the charter. And I, I've been thinking about this, and please uh, let me know what you feel. We're going to do chapters 1 through 3, am I correct? Yes. So what I would think that is that what I would do is call for comments, starting with the chapter 1, okay, uh, and proceed from that point on. Is that all right with everybody? Then we'll go to 2. But you all got to understand this. We have seven more meetings, all right, before we must be done. And I think we take that into consideration as we move on. I think if we continue to do what we're doing, the clerk and I were talking about it, we'll probably be able to finish up before the seventh meeting. That's wonderful because that will give us an opportunity to look at a draft, all right, and make any additional changes to it uh, before we send it over to uh, state. Any comment on that? Everybody in, in agreement? Any comment? Now, at the end of... Mr. Mayor, I think yeah. that's prudent. Huh? I think that's a prudent... Thank you. Piece. Coming from you, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Be nice, that, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that uh, also that as we... We're going to have to make a decision. It doesn't have to be a decision that has to be made in stone today. But as we go through, let's vote on what we've already seen. Uh, and it can be changed at any time. Uh, but let's vote on what we see. And remember that whatever we do, we vote on affirmatively. There's, we should have a reason to give to the state legislature as to why we did that. Okay. And thank all of you who did share. What was the share card? SharePoint? SharePoint? Yeah, thank all of you for using the SharePoint. The ones that didn't use it, I know you'll all see you next, next meeting. But <laughs> But uh, thank you for using it. Okay. Did you have a, uh, a comment, Mr. Tag? I saw you. I just wanted to make sure. Did we move forward to approve the agenda, Ms. Mayor? Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you told me I did. No, we, we did the uh, minutes. I think. Uh, well, let's, let's approve the minutes. You yeah, want to make a motion? Approve the agenda. The agenda. You want to make a I move for the adoption of the agenda. Second. Property moves the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's vote, please. The vote is unanimous. Now we're ready to go. Mr. So what? We have uh, Ms. Walker come back. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To be sworn in. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Stepped, she stepped away again. Thank Perhaps you. Perhaps that ought to be a thing we ought to get done because it may require yes, votes. Right. Later. Is she out? Yeah. 
Press the bottom, please. Ms. Walker, uh, this is Reverend McClendon, Assistant City Attorney. Ms. Walker informed me that she had an appointment with the emergency and she had to oh, Okay. All right. Well, everything is all right. Uh, Mr. Chair. We got one more report in the rest. Ms. Henry. Hey, Ms. Henry, come on up. <laughs> I'm doing good. So, Ms. Henry, we're going to exit you. Please stand up and raise your right hand. I had to tell y'all, I had to say, I didn't get sworn in. <laughs> we got you. We got you. <laughs> so, I believe you have your oath of office in front of you. I do. If you would. Uh, and my sidekick got me. <laughs> please raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I state your name. I, Jordan Henry. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will truly discharge. The duties as a member of the City of South Fulton Charter Commission. The City of South Fulton Charter Commission. In all matters which require. In all matters which require. My official action. My official action. To the best of my knowledge and skill. To the best of my knowledge and skill. And I will so act. And I will so act. As in my judgment. As in my judgment. Will be most conducive. Will be most conducive. To the welfare and best interest. To the welfare and best interest. Of the entire city. Of the entire city. I further solemnly swear that I am not the holder of any unaccounted for public money do this state and that I am otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution of the United States of America. I further solemnly swear that I have been a resident of the city of South Fulton for the time required by the Constitution and laws of this state, and, of this state and, the charter, and the charter, and code of ordinances, and code of, ordinances of the city of South Fulton. Of the city of South Fulton. So, help me God, so help me God, or so I affirm. Or so I affirm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. One more slight housekeeping matter. You know, we, we uh, voted on using Robert Rules as order as a, a guiding principle. But I think what we didn't do is, I think we should have the economy there. That can either be somebody on this uh, this desk, or it could be the city attorney, uh, whichever you chose. Uh, what's your pleasure on that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we 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 moved the dot top, uh, parliamentary procedure. Uh, we don't have a parliamentarian. Uh, I think we need to have one, and it could be either someone on this desk, or it could be the city attorney. And I'll just ask you for your pleasure. Uh, Mr. Crane, go right here. I certainly agree with you, um, but whether it's on this panel or someone from the city, yes. he needs to be as well versed in Robert Rules of Order as, as possible. Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Adams uh, is on the cutting edge, but it probably puts a lot more on his plate to assume additional responsibility. Great. I think you're right. He ain't that cutting edge. Uh, <laughs> any more? Any more discussion? All right, uh, Madam Vice Chair, go ahead. Mr. Chair, I certainly concur that we need um, some authority so that we um, are able to hear each other, which is the goal of Robert's Rules of Order. Um, however, that can get very technical, uh, and so uh, I suggest that we have an outside party from this board. Um, to regulate our comments to make sure that our members are heard. Well, the chair is open for a motion. I make a motion uh, to nominate Mr. Corey Adams. Is there a second? Second. The property moved to second discussion. Thank you very much. Can we ask Mr. Adams if that will end? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, he got and whether or not he wants to accept that before we uh, no. All right. put this on him. Mr. Adams. Well, uh, what I will say is that uh, 
of course, it's his will of the body. I, I'll be happy to do it. Um, That's enough. I would like to be a, a second choice, though. But if it's the will of the body, um, you know, I don't uh, mind doing it. I have the assistance of my able legal assistance over there to back me up. So, well, the important thing he said was if it's the will of the, of the body. Right. <laughs> so, any further discussion? Can you get his assistant maybe to um, to be the parliamentarian because he does have a lot on his plate, even trying to keep us straight. <laughs> well, we can work with we can work together. Yes, sir. We're looking at you for parliament. We're looking at they were looking at you for parliamentarian. Or the, a, or the assistant attorney. Yeah. Maybe the yes. mm-hmm. okay. Because okay. you guys got a lot on your plate. I mean, just keeping us straight is a lot. Corey, that was very good. Mr. Chair, did that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Gray, let me just justify why I made the recommendation. Mr. Adams keeps very copious notes of everything that's going on. He reads stuff back to us to know what the the motion is on the floor. Yeah. Um, and he is following Robert's rules of order. Um, it'll be that's, that was the rationale behind it. He's doing such a fabulous job of being a quasi parliamentarian already. That okay, was, that was my rationale. It's not okay. We're not going to not going to do too much. But uh, was there a second to your motion, Mr. Crane? Yes. Yes, Mr. Herring. Mr. Herring, second. Okay. The motion is, Mr. Clerk. Motion is to appoint. Uh, City clerk as the parliamentarian for this body. Okay. We're probably moved to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's vote, please. Okay. That, that passes that mistake. Any nays? We have two nays. Two nays. Okay. Nays. All right. It's the first time we had nays since we've been meeting. He has too much on his plate. All right. Okay. okay. Um, okay, let's begin the discussion. Uh, I hope everybody has, has reviewed the charter, uh, starting with uh, 1.10, I think it is. Is that right, Mr. Clerk? Yes, sir. Oh, here he is. Yeah, 1.10. Uh, who would like to uh, begin the discussion? And we're going to be using only Article 1. Okay? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. If I may. Go right ahead. You want to get the, the actual comments first per each chapter, like you mentioned before? Yeah, but we, yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is we're going to do Chapter 1. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about from the public. Are you planning no, to do that we, first? We don't have or another public month? hearing until the last that's meeting. Am I right, Mr. Clerk? Mm-hmm. That's what the body agreed yes, to. Yes, okay. they don't have another. Which is good because. If we can get it all done and get that draft, that would that would give an opportunity for the public to review that draft and make some suggestions. All right. Discussion is on uh, Article One. Go ahead. So online didn't participate in the online the online um, captioning of comments. I actually, if no one has, well, let me ask the question: Does anyone have anything before? Section 110, because I had some comments on the ethics section. Well, if you don't mind, um, you just give me your comments. Oh, just give me my comments? Back, yeah. Okay. Well, my comments are, to me, this section is pretty vague. And so my recommendation is, well, first I want to find out if you all are aware that the council members actually changed this section so that they have to have, I believe it's nine members on their board in order for ethics complaints to be addressed. And I believe Mr. Adams can kind of speak more to this, but I'm not sure if you all are aware of of the ethics as it is today, how that change came about and where we are. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, The ethics section starts at uh, Section 6-A. And I think the uh, commission was only doing one through three today. Yes, so. I'm on section one, t- on section ten under one point one two under municipal power. Okay. 
So I think there's two sections on ethics, but the one I'm speaking, and so maybe I need to get clarification on this section, but this one is specifically talking about adopting ethics, ordinances, and regulations, and that is in compliance with submitting ethics complaint. And right now, it's been put on hold, and I don't, I don't know if the general public is even aware of how this I, came about I and how this may be tied into the section that I wanted to provide comments on. Or maybe we need to get clarification on the two sections on ethics. And Ms. Atkinson, you uh, want to speak on the same issue? Yeah, so what I was going to say is this is just delineating, uh, 1.12 delineates all the powers that the city has. Mm -hmm. So one of those is to adopt ethics ordinances. Mm -hmm. um, the ethics section, as Mr. Adams indicated, that details how the ethics board would work, what kind of complaints, mm -hmm. the procedures, the mm -hmm. process, is later on. Gotcha. Yeah. So all this is saying, hey, the city has the power to adopt um, regulations and ordinances dealing with that. So if you have any comments as to the method of adoption uh, that you wanted to change in, in section one, we could entertain that. No, because apparently mine are in section two. Okay. <laughs> Check the other. But you're in agreement. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're in agreement that we should have ethics powers. Is that correct? Am I in agreement? Yes. Oh, yes. I okay. Definitely. Uh, we really should have them now, but we don't. <laughs> I just want to make it clear for the public and those that watch. Yeah, we, uh, we any, have any, right now. any other discussion on this? So I'm assuming that that's an issue that remains the same uh, mm -hmm. in Section 1. Mm -hmm. All right, any Ms. Academic, go ahead. Question. Um, I guess I made edits in the SharePoint to 1 through 3. Um, and I don't know if anybody, everybody had a chance to review those. I saw. Yeah. And then I will be quiet. Go ahead. Wait, you said one, one through three? Section. We were to deal with one through yeah, three so today. You, yeah, you give me, you get a comment now on section one, right? Yeah, all of my comments are in the Go ahead. document. Go ahead. No, I, I, I felt like if everybody read it, then I don't need to make any further comments. Well, you don't assume that. <laughs> in the document. Go right ahead. Yeah, it's on the screen as well. Excuse me. Right. Okay, so for 1.11, one, 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 uh -huh. um, I had a question about uh, including a map rather than doing tracks or including a map and doing tracks, but uh, having a map might make it easier to um, for residents or anyone else looking at the code of ordinances to know where the boundaries are of the city. Mm. Vice Chair. Um, and my comment would be, of course, this matter needs to be updated as we've added in the closing industrial district. So a map, which will also include the meets and bounds of the, uh, of the area, would be the appendix to this charter that this current charter does not have that uh, exhibit associated with it. So it would also, I would also concur that a map of our area should be referenced in this portion for the boundaries of the city of South Florida. Any further discussion on this issue? So if you go ahead, Mr. Brown. Yeah, and I'll, I'll let the, uh, the legal team chime in and miss her. I, I believe they go by census tracts to um, um, properly identify property. Uh, if you look at a map, um, you uh, are not able to get down to that granular, granular level, typically. So in any... Um, General Assembly bill, they normally uh, attach to census tracts. Nothing to say that you can't have a map and a census tract. So. Well, that could be in addition to that. Uh, that could be a, but that makes sense. Like that. I make a motion that we uh, include as one of our recommendations under 1.11 that there be a map included in Appendix A showing the city boundaries. In addition to, Mr. Clerk, that's in addition to the tracks, all right? All right, is there a second? Second. Okay. Property moves and second. Any further discussion? I have a question. Go ahead, go ahead. Very simply, right. don't, I don't disagree with the, the, the piece, but the boundaries and the maps are two different things. So we're saying 
the, the boundaries would be exhibit appendix A and a map would be appendix B. I think that's the way it would have to be based on her motion. Mm -hmm. I think it would have to be that way based on her motion. Well, that's, I'm just saying I heard her motion yeah. and she said it a little different. That's why I'm just asking. No, I think that's just the, to be clear. I think that's the intent. Okay. To have, to have both. All right. All right. Mr. Crane, I think I saw your hand. No. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair. Mr. Chair, just to be clear, the meets and bounds description should be written in the charter with a reference to the map, which is attached as an appendix or exhibit. Is that what we're saying? I think um, Mr. Uh, Taggart had that confusion. Yeah, so I just wanted to be very clear okay. to your point, Madam yes. Vice Chair. Yes. So not two attachments, a description and a map attachment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Crane, go ahead. Just my clarity. So, one appendix, which includes a map, which is inclusive of the boundaries and all territory therein. Is that, co is that what you're saying, Madam Vice Chair? Saying that the description would be listed in the, in this section, a written description, and then it also references a map. A map. Yeah. Not just of the boundaries, which is a, could be a line. You want to about boundaries and including all part therein, which a map would be broader than just an outline. I think that's what Mr. Taylor was hearing. At. I'm hearing a simple outline so people can look at it and find out where they live. Well, if you look yeah. at the outline, Mr. Chair, yeah. it, it will not say where Fulton Industrial is or Old National Highway. Or boat rock, uh -huh. it won't. But if you have a map, it can get down to the granular level so people can zoom in and see. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's a map yeah. inclusive of the boundaries, not just an outline of the city. Oh, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, not just an outline. Right. Because the city's map looks to be like you threw some mud up on the wall and it splattered everywhere. So. Yeah, I know that. You know, people have been asking about this too. I don't know where I live. You know, I thought I was in this place. I wind up not being in the city. So I think this will add clarity. And I think that would be the rationale, Mr. Clerk, that uh, people can now find out where they are and understand where the boundary is of the city. I'm clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My brother said he said the same thing. <laughs> let's move. Let's get one more comment uh, from Mr. Jeff Jordan. We'll <laughs> move on with the vote. So... I, I'm just kind of looking even further. It says the city clerk shall maintain. Is it that we want to rely just on the city clerk, or do we want to look at the city manager? Since the city manager actually manages departments that keep up with uh, legal boundaries in software such as Sage, and anytime that information changes, that, that the city manager would actually be responsible for Well, you, you're talking about who has authority to keep the map? Well, who because that's G in GIS with the city clerk as it states? GIS. Wouldn't that be correct, Mr. Clerk? Yes, Mr. Jordan, I think the reason uh, that they stated the city clerk is that my office has the responsibility of all records, mm -hmm. records retention. Right. So um, the, the city manager uh, is not the person that, that maintains those documents. That's, right. that's our responsibility, and I, I believe that's why uh, the writers uh, included that. Okay. All right. I was just trying to give some additional support. I have a uh, question, Mr. Chairman. We're going to take your question, Ms. Henry, and we're going to move on. Go ahead. My question is, so if the city clerk is the keeper of the map, how does the public have access to that? Is it posted on our website somewhere, or, or you, you just have it all to yourself, and if we don't call you and ask you for it, we don't have access to it? Go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Henry, for that uh, opportunity to share that information with the public. Uh, yes, we do have it in our office. Actually, it's posted on our wall. Mm -hmm. But, yes, it's on the website as well under uh, the mayor and city council. If you go to that page, there is a map there that is maintained uh, by the IT department, actually, that creates that uh, document and updates it whenever there are any changes or updates to it. So Thank it is you, available on the website. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for answering my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Mr. Chair, last, last thing I have. Hold I promise, it, hold I promise it. you this. Is it not true that the boundaries of the city have been set 
back when this charter passed, and then it was amended when Fourth Industrial came in. So there's no, therefore, no changing to the boundaries that we can foresee unless somebody wants to get out of an existing mm-hmm. city and come in, and that's not likely to occur. Mm-hmm. Is that true? That's true. Okay. All right. Last uh, comment by the vice chair, and we're going to move on. I wanted to add that the motion includes that the map be attached, so that will be a part of the charter document, as well as just confirming that the model code references um, that the city clerk, who is the keeper of the public records, holds the document on okay. and Mr. make it available. Ms. Clerk, would you read that motion back to him so we make sure we get it right? Yes, uh, what I recorded is that uh, the map which of the city will be attached to the uh, document as Exhibit A, in addition to the writing of the, uh, the boundaries, the, uh, the census tracts within the document. Did you get the rationale? The rationale? For doing it. Just fix it before the procedure. Okay. Yeah. So noted. All right. All right. Ms. Hackerberg, you still have the floor. You have nothing else in number one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chair, you didn't carry that vote. I didn't? Okay. Well, let's do that before you do that. All right. Yeah, right. You understand. You don't have to call for the Who didn't vote? Yeah, the motion's on. Yeah, let's vote. Any further discussion? No. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's vote. I record that as unanimous. Okay. Go right ahead. We're still in one point, one zero. Uh, my next comment was, I think, 1.12. Um, and possibly combining 1.12B1 with 1.12B9. Uh, They're both really dealing with, you know, environmental protection, I guess, one is a little bit more, B1 is a little bit more specific with air and water pollution, but 9 seems to cover kind of all of that, or if not, maybe we can add it in there, so just so that it's, there's no redundancy. So you, you're you saying, Adam, both as written in the chart, but just join them together. Is that, is that what you're doing? Well, I would leave 9, remove 1, Remove 1.12B1, keep 1.12B9, and if there's anything that needs to be added for, you know, the ability to regulate air and water pollution, to include that in 9. Mr. Clark, can you put that on screen? Yeah, B1 is up there now. Um, Just for clarification, you're saying that you think it's redundant? Is that our rationale behind moving in this direction to combine it? Ms. Ackerberry? So I think they cover similar areas in terms of the environment and the ability to regulate it as well as for environmental protection. So if needed, we can beef up nine to make sure it incorporates B1. The only problem I have is that you said beef it up. What would the language sound like? So, um, I think the one thing that is missing from, or maybe we can consolidate them. Maybe that's a better that's term. Um, <laughs> beef up is my own kind of, you know, <laughs> loose vernacular. Yeah, uh, but maybe if we can condense B1 and um, B9. I, I hadn't worked on wording, but, I mean, I can do that. I just hadn't had it. Well, I was just throwing the idea You do one, yeah. Uh, I just don't know what that, I'm trying to understand what that would look like and without specific language, I don't know. Okay, do, uh, yeah, go ahead. I think, I think what they were trying to do is just kind of, uh, under the municipal powers, I think they were just trying to spell it all out 
the air, water, environmental issues, right. and animal regulations. I wouldn't put all that together because it, then it gets too bogged down. So I think what they were trying to do is just um, try to separate the two to let us know that, okay, we, it's covered. The municipal powers is covered this, this, and that. Right. So I think that's the objective for doing that at the time. Any further discussion on that issue? I yes. have a question, uh, a statement, I guess, Mr. Chairman, is that I wouldn't recommend that we merge those two items mm -hmm. because in 1.1.2, B1 is talking about three different things, air, water, and environmental. And then in 1.1.2 B9 is just specifically the environmental issues. I think they need to be separate because they all do something totally different when we're talking about quality of life for the city. So that's just my point. Uh, Mr. Crane, go ahead. Yeah, I, I concur, but in section... 1.121, there's a line on the third line, it talks about a natural stream, the things that flow within the city or to the city. But more importantly, on in section nine, it gets down to the matters of development, stormwater runoff, um, erosion control. A builder wants to build something, they gotta put silt into it. And that's where this comes into play that we can speaking to kind of different things, very similar, um, but, you know, being separate, I don't think it creates a problem. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I think that Ms. Ackleberry hit it on the other issue uh, as to later on in the charter, these things become very specific, all right? We're talking about it now in this, in this one, one point ten. But they become very specific. So a lot of times you need to change the, uh, or to clarify a lot in, one, in, in section one. You'll get to the meat and the potatoes as you go in. All right? So uh, let me get uh, Madam Vice Chair down. I appreciate that. I just wanted to add that section one point one two nine tracks the language of the model code. And at some point, this body um, chose to add in the air and water pollution and environmental issues as a priority of the city. Yes. And so um, I, I would suggest that they remain separate uh, and apart so that um, our priorities are specifically listed. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Taggart. Thank you. I think the, the whole aspect of when you talk about powers, powers give you the ability to be able to come in to do something. Right? And so I like it separate because it specifically states at the beginning to regulate. Regulations are different than protecting and preserving. And so when you look at these action words, that to me is the kind of determination if they're similar. That's why I asked the question, are we trying to combine things that are of similar nature versus trying to separate for the safety of the fact that it says environmental? It's, it's what we do. It gives us, it will give the city the opportunity to do something, protect, preserve, and then the other one says to regulate. So that's why I just want to throw that out. And that, you know, that model can be used throughout. It's all about the powers. All right. Since that being a motion, it was just a discussion. Go ahead. I just wanted to, you know, add to the discussion that I see that the landfill that we have tying into um, section 1.121, and it's left completely out of line if we were to alleviate it. Um, and a lot of people are unaware that we even have a landfill in the city of South Fulton, so I really think, if anything, we can leave it like it is or combine them to make sure we cover all our bases. Right, and we will deal with specific right. issues like landfill as it pertains to this. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on this? this one? Just a question. Did you it? say a landfill or some landfill? Well, she meant the. Uh, she meant, okay, that's yeah. what I thought. Uh, 
Anybody, anything else in 1.10? You can have a question. We want to make sure you go. Uh, set their millage rates, but I think that at the time this charter was adapted, the uh, it would not succeed 13.469, am I correct? Uh, That's correct. Yeah, 13.469, but uh, uh, cities can, can set their millage rates uh, if they're allowed to. We're still in limitations. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I said they're allowed to. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if you wish, if cities wish to exceed this 13.469, it would be happy by a referendum of the uh, public. Right. Mr. Chair. Just one moment. Okay. Okay, Mr. Secretary. Well, and then the other issue is, I guess, um, that it can't be increased under 40A, the next page, higher than 14.469. Um, during the first five years, and I don't think there's anything in here that limits it after that five-year period. So referendum. I don't know if that's something you, you still have to have. Am I, Mr. Clerk, am I correct? You still have to have a referendum. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Yeah, Mr. Clerk, Mr. Attorney, they would still have to regard it. They would still have to have a referendum if they make if they raise the uh, uh, average tax past 13 for whatever it is. That is correct. To Ms. Alcovera's point on that section, which is a 40A, since we're already five years outside of the charter, do we simply want to remove that language for what happens during the first five years and rely simply upon any changes have to be done by city resolution? I, is it understood that mm -hmm. you that would have to have a resolution if you exceed the maximum? Okay. That's the first sentence. Right. And what's your comment? My comment is that the language of that section references uh, the first five years of existence. Since this is a ch uh, new charter or a revised charter post five years of existence, do we even need to have that language in there for what happened, for what no longer applies? And my point would always be that, uh, Mr. Attorney, correct me, uh, regardless, you're going to have to have a reference. Right. All right, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Just one moment. One moment. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. That's correct. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me make sure I get it right. I'm sorry, right. Mr. Chairman. But my point was, when the language was created, it was saying within the first five years. But moving forward, how I understand it, is that there has to be a referendum period, whether it was five years, absolutely. ten years, 15 years. You're absolutely 20. correct. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Chair. I, I was go, just going to go say ahead, that that language needs to stay in there. Right. Any um, any updates, you know, um, we can update it, but that definitely needs to stay. That language needs to stay there. Okay. Just a point of clarification. The 13.469, was that number derived from the study associated with what it took to run the city in terms of funding? I would say this yes, is, but okay. <laughs> just trying to get I some clarification. That can't be definite right there. Okay, no problem. Let's let's tell it and I'm sitting okay. out there. Go ahead, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, sure. Mr. Crane, go ahead. <laughs> Two things. The city has made a number of changes to the charter over the past five years. Is there any way we can get a copy of that so we can see what the what the real document looks like? Because it has evolved in many, many ways. Num number one. And to shed a little bit of light on the 13.469 and how we got there. 
the Miller's rate in 2017 and before, before this charter was drafted, before it was approved by the House and then the Senate, the Miller's rate was 12 point something. Before this bill passed out of the House, House then House Representative um, um, who? No. Um, uh, Mandisha is in her spot now. Teal. B-Z-T. B-Z-T. State Rep. B-Z-T made the only amendment to the bill before it left the House. And that amendment that she made was that the Miller's rate cannot be more than 1% more than it was currently. That was the only change of the original language. That's how we got to 13, because it was only 12 and some change. Well, let me say this. If, if I understood your first comments that you had, Mr. Crane. Yes, sir. I, it, you say you want to see a charter where the changes have been made. Are you assuming there's another charter coming? No, 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 no. No, I, no. What, I, what, I, what we do know is, as was mentioned by uh, Commissioner, um, I'm having a senior moment, Daphne, she made earlier that the, uh, the council made changes as it relates to the ethics. So that's the change. What other changes have been made that we need to know about? Because I assume, Mr. Clerk, that this is a copy of the original well, chart. Is, is, is that correct? Yeah, actually, your document uh, includes the current charter as amended. Okay. The second document is actually the original charter, which was uh, passed in 2017, uh, right. 2015, um, which included, it tracked the, the model uh uh, charter in a lot of ways, right. but uh, you have actually both documents in your book, and there to address your other point, there are about four or five instances where the council has uh, made changes, and what I can do, I have one actually in your book that is under consideration, okay. but there are others that I can uh, provide to you as well, right. um, and I was my intent was to bring it up as you discussed it to let you right. know uh, what the council's thinking right. is in terms of uh, those sections. But thank you for that. Certainly it would be helpful because I know I'm working on the first document, mm -hmm. and it would be helpful if this is the one as modified, if there's any way to mark this one up so that I know when I get to that, this is a change from the original mm -hmm. so that we'll have at least that level of understanding going into it. Good. Okay, this, is this document, uh, go ahead. Yeah, and, and if I may, so that you understand what, we're, what we have in your books, the first uh, document in here at the top, it says South Fulton, Georgia Code of Ordinances. In the left-hand corner, it has July 5th, 2022, 5.34 p.m. That document is the current charter as amended. So that has been amended um, several times. For compar comparison purposes, if you look at the back, you have the House Bill 514 AP as passed. That is the original charter. Um, um, just for history uh, and for your, your um, edification, the General Assembly uh, changed the charter in June of 2022. They made a number of changes uh, under House Bill 1019, which is where we got to our current document. Um, it would have been nice to have explanations in terms of why certain changes were made, but that's in the uh, wisdom of the General Assembly. So I, that's why I gave you both documents, so that if you wanted to look at what was originally approved upon incorporation as to where we are now, uh, you can make that comparison. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. So when we are talking about House bills and Senate bills, uh, a city cannot become uh, a, a law and put into existence without the House and the Senate um, version. So my question to you is, even though we understand that Representative Bruce passed this law back and whatever he did on HB 514, where's the Senate version? Is it the exact same thing? How, what does that look like? Yes, actually to answer that question, um, um, the bill went to conference committee, of course, uh, uh, with the Senate. And if you, can, if you look on the front page, it says House House Bill 514 as passed by House and Senate. 
So uh, the Senate agreed to the uh, parts of this bill, uh, and they incorporated their changes in there. But this is the, the version that was approved by the House and the Senate and signed by the governor. Okay. That's my question, because I know that both chambers have to approve to make sure that the city becomes low in whatever instance. So what was the Senate version of that bill? Do you know that? I do not know the number, but I can get that for you. I can, can, I, can I talk you to that? Wait, one moment. One moment. She still has the floor, Ms. Okay. Ms. Green. I'm sorry. Okay. That was my, okay. That was my last question. Go ahead. To speak to that, um, they are different as night and day. The bill that passed out of the House, House Bill 514, looks nothing like the one that the Senate passed and that the House agreed to. As you've all probably heard over the years, that the, the Senate gutted the bill and the House agreed to it because they felt like this is all we can get and we can change it as time go by. How did I know that? I was on the ground. I was right there uh, from the inception. So it looks completely different. That's why I was able to, well, right. Uh, it's different, but the one, only one that's, you know, in play is the one that they agreed to, the one that we're looking at, because the other one, it's still there. Okay. Mr. Clerk, I, don't, I didn't see any motion in this. Uh, is it the pleasure of the group that uh, the phase as it is? <coughs> okay. I have one. I, I, I have a question, because it says about higher taxes to be passed by referendum. Mm -hmm. But are we in turn saying that we can't lower mm -hmm. taxes? Mm -hmm. Should we consider putting lowering and a higher limit recommended by the resolution of the city council and approved by the majority of the qualified voters? Are you accepting? <coughs> Is it not? Back here. I concur with Mr. Chadrick's um, assessment that we could possibly go lower, but this language is limiting anything lower than 13.469, so um, that we add higher or lower limit. Those two words, or lower limit, is recommended by resolution of the city council. Mr. Mr. Uh, I move for the change of the language in terms to include lower or higher limit and recommended by resolution of the city council and approved by a majority of the qualified voters. Okay, thank you. So, oh, okay, before, oh, we, and before we go any further, uh, Mr. Train, what do you think about that uh, change? It takes the assumption out. I think that's what you're looking for. But it takes the assumption out. Okay. Mr. Crane, then we're going to vote. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. the language here was to stop runaway taxation and stop the city from going off the rails with high millage rates. So if we're saying if the city council has a windfall, property taxes increase, and they don't need the 13 point and they want to roll it back. We handcuff them in lowering our taxes if we say that they must go to the citizens for a vote, which may be eight, nine, ten months away. I don't, I don't think that's. Are we talking that or I thought we were talking millage rate. We're, talk, we're talking about raising it, lowering the millage rate. If we add in that they can lower the millage rate, but it must go back to the qualified voters, we just handcuff uh. our. Our, our ben, I, I didn't say to lower any millage work rate. I said to change the language. That was my motion. And Mr. Chair, by the way, well, uh, we look at the way, second Lord, You don't have the floor. Mr. Crane has the floor. He's I got you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm speaking to, I'm trying to speak to what I thought I heard when it said higher or lower. And that was reference to the millage rate. And it was saying if, if the rate is going to go higher, or lower, or lower, it says it must be approved by the qualified voters. And I think that handcuff, uh, handcuffs 
the council if they want to lower the rate. Because it, there's that's been right. a lot of language, Mr. Chair, as you well know, right. to lower the millage rate because we are cash flush. We're at 13, uh, uh, 13 mil. That's $13 per thousand of property taxes, I mean property value. And we're getting over nearly $30 million a year more now than we were getting when we were not a city. So there's been a movement to, re to reduce the rate, but this potential uh, change would handcuff them and not allow them to do it unless and until the voters got a chance to chime in. I think it handcuffed them. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Taggart. I love you. What we're talking about, I mean, what I mentioned was process and allowing taxpayers to be able to contribute and weigh in. No one's saying that the council can make any recommendations. But I think anything that involves people's pocketbooks, that the voters should in turn have an opportunity to say yes or no. Proposition 105, I mean, you looked at countless examples of what's happened in California, all different types of things. I, my thought is if it's going to be a qualified component of having taxes, if you're going to, if we're allowing it to become higher, for the resolution, why couldn't it also to serve as it being lower? What's, yeah. what's the difference between the two? I, well, one thing, in my 20 years, I've never seen a room full of people come and say, y'all better stop lowering my taxes. Never. <laughs> I mean. Nor did they say, I want to yeah, vote on so that. So my point yeah. is to you is that I think that the ability to lower taxes based on what you're talking about, windfalls and things should be in the hands um, of the council. All right? And do anything further than that, then we should be we should have these decisions. They've had this all the while. I mean governments all around have been using it before. So uh, is there was there a motion that was a second on the on the motion? I didn't have Chairman, a, what I is the question? Second. Read the read the what I had okay. Mr. Taggart moved that under 40A, which is on the screen, to add the language as follows for all years, the millage rate imposed for ad valorem taxes on real property for operating budget purposes should not exceed 13.4469 unless a higher or lower is what he's adding mm -hmm. is recommended by resolution of the city council and approved by a majority of the qualified voters. Just a second. I didn't, ha I didn't record a second. Is there any second? I second. We've been properly moved to second. Uh, any further discussion? Yes. Be before we proceed on, can we turn the page and finish reading, and finish reading um, um, the taxes and the Avalon, the Avalara? It's, we're on a 40A right now. But turn the page and finish reading that paragraph, and I think we'll get more clarity. And it tells you about um, increasing the millage rate higher than a certain point. I think we'll understand it better. Dear, you finished? Yes. Okay. Madam Vice Chair. So based on what I'm hearing, currently taxes can be lowered without the voters. They just can't be raised without right. the voters. And so by leaving it as it is, it does give the freedom to lower the taxes because we've never had people That's complain true. about lower taxes. So based on the discussion and further edification, I, I recommend that we keep this the same but to allow for the freedom to that's, that's a motion that's, 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 that's been moved and seconded okay uh wait a minute wait 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 are you asking me to do a you got an original motion, motion. excuse me excuse me excuse me i'll allow you to say what yeah what's yeah. your question are you asking me no I'm, I'm asking i don't i don't have a problem to to madam vice chair's perspective since i made the motion can do a friendly substitute if that's what you are asking me to. You can withdraw the motion too. Well, 
what what is what is the what is a we? You made the motion. No, I, it's not about me. Yeah, real, I don't know if you made the motion. So you can. I don't know what the spring substitute would say. Mr. Chairman, there's a motion on the floor already, uh, and she put uh, a substitute motion in, but it has to be voted on. Did you put a substitute motion? What is your? If that's the case, I didn't hear a substitute motion. Right there. In discussion. All right, we were in discussion. But if you want to make a substitute motion, it's on you. No substitute motion at this time. I, I'm discussing that no action okay. should be taken. So since we're All at right. the vote. The vote can pass or the vote can fail. Right. Let's vote on Mr. Patrick's motion. No, we're going to vote. I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. 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 Hey, we can move on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. okay. Uh, any, any further? 1.10. One one any further conversation? All right, Mr. Chair, let's go to, uh, what is it, two point whatever it is? Two point. Two point one one. Article two. Yes. Okay. All right. Floor is open. Any discussion? I got a few on that one as well. Let me let me just here's one thing I I'll, I'll just bring up. And uh, is everybody listening? Yes, sir. Here's here's one I should, I would bring up. It would be an addition to. Uh, I guess it would be 2.11, and that it, uh, and that is we've had, a lot, and the clerk can tell you, we've had a lot of issues with people, elected officials, who are not giving us their current address. All right, that's been a you can say it's been a prevalent issue. Uh, I would like to see something in there that says that the the. Council person shall provide the current address to the city's clerk upon receipt and at least once per year on or before the 30th of each year in office. I mean, Mr. Clerk, do you want to talk about that? Because you're still, you're still waiting on a lot of folks' addresses. Yeah, what I will say is that the current charter does not have any provisions to mandate that uh, mayor or council provide their current address. Um, the only time that uh, I have to, they have to provide their address to me is at the time of qualification. But uh, outside of that document, which is a, a legal document, um, there's nothing uh, within the charter or the code of ordinances that uh, compels or forces uh, a person to give their current address. And that has been a, uh, a question that has been posed to my office in terms of verifying addresses, but um, there's nothing that compels. Um, if they don't want to give it to me, there's nothing that compels me uh, them to give it to me. So I moved. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? I just, I just First of all, what you sir moved it? <laughs> right. <laughs> what you sir moved it? Is there a motion? You want to put a motion on the floor? She got the floor. No. Uh, so I moved that the charter reflect a requirement that uh, that at least once a year, on or before June 30th of each year, that the mayor and all council members provide their current legal address to the city clerk so that we can continuously establish uh, residency in within our city boundaries for those elected officials. Second. Okay. Okay. Properly moved and second. Uh, Ms. Jordan, a discussion? I have a discussion about it. So accepted. Second. Second. Oh, okay, move the second. Let's vote on the first. Uh, I have a question. On the uh, amendment. Did Discuss you still allow us to do that? Uh, no. Not, not Go just ahead. The reason I want to ask a question Go right is ahead. because we're in section, uh, in Article 2, and the amendment is germane to what se which section? I think we ought to be. 2.11 election. Am I correct, Mr. Clerk? Mm -hmm. Is where we have to, we would have to add this. 2.11 okay. on the election. 
two point one one. Okay, so that'll be that'll be one one. All the way to the next G H H H article. Line H, right? I think that would be a, a new line. That would be a new line. Right, right. H, yes, right. yes. Okay. Yes, right. I'm just trying to make sure we know exactly no. where we've been. You right on it. Okay. You right on it. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Clerk, what's the motion now? I have a motion by Ms. Judge Johnson, second by Ms. Alcaberry, to add a requirement within the charter, and I guess that's under 2.11. I did not second Excuse that. Excuse me, I seconded it. Ms. Henry seconded it. Ms. Henry, okay. Yes, you're there. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Did, we, did we have a pending amendment? And I seconded the amendment as well. Okay, she accepted both of them. All right. All right. At least once a year, no later than June 30th, to provide a legal address to the city clerk. And the friendly amendment was to add uh, information to qualify. Uh, proof of residency. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, let's go. D, you want to say, we'll get D, we're going to go right there. Okay. <laughs> so, what would be the consequences? Oh, oh, my question. That's a good question, D. We need to add that. I would defer to the uh, city attorney, but the uh, charter earlier in the document states that uh, you must maintain continuous residence. And if you do not, then you fail to be qualified for that office. Okay. But this is not about living in it. This is about proving that you do. Right. You may, in fact, live there, but you haven't done your fulfill the responsibility in proving that. Is there any bound in this deal can't prove where they live? Is that what? Any bound in this deal can't prove where they live. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right. Now. Yeah. So, so the other part of that, Mr. Chair, would yeah. be what would be acceptable evidence of proof? I mean, is it a mortgage a statement? Lease? Uh, is it a uh, lease, which may yeah. not be in your name, yeah. uh, a telephone bill, the utility bill? We've got to spell that out because if you bring me a letter from your best friend, does that qualify? So we need to talk about that. Uh, and if we're going to talk about consequences back to the prior question, um, we need to say we need to have consequences. Well, when, I, when I was in law school, we talked about the reasonable man. <laughs> And the reasonable man uh, would know what to do. But if you're assuming that everybody ain't reasonable, then we'll have to spell it out. Well, so. we have to assume that it's going to have a charter, which is a roadmap to success. I'm so, with the, you. so that's what this is about. Mr. Chairman, can I make a point of uh, uh, no, let me get Let me get uh, Vice Chair Jen, I'll come to you. Okay. Um, school residency requirements, documentation, um, has proven to be reliable in our county and in most counties. So items such as utility bill or third-party verification um, of an official matter um, could be the type, that could be what we use to determine school residency documents. And, um, and also wanted to mention that this is for the purpose of continuous residency throughout your t a term of the elected official. So the consequences speak to if someone were to no longer live in the city while they're in office, what those consequences would be for failure to maintain continuous residency. Or if they fail to do so. So the question, uh, Mr. Can, Crane, I, can I open? Ms. Crane, I'm Ms. Crane, sorry, Crane. she still has the floor. I'm, I yield. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Crane. Can I, do well, I thought I was next. Excuse please? me, I think I was next. I'm okay, saying, well, Mr. Chairman. That's one thing, Chair, and make a mistake sometimes because we can't see that. No, but, but uh, you can see me right now. Right so, Mr. Crane, so me, to the here. maker of the motion, my offer is: Can we add in what proof of residency means? What based on whatever the state or the city or the county uh, re uh, requirements are? Are you uh, amenable to that? And if you are, I'm still willing to second the motion. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So one, one, okay, one moment. I think, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Mr. Chair, there's already a, a, a motion that's been seconded. Yeah. And an amendment that's also been seconded to add a new one in the uh, item four. Thank you. I make it just fine, Mr. Chair. Okay, let's vote on the original. Let's vote on the original. 
motion by raising your hand. You want to hear it too? Can you re right, repeat what the version of motion is, Mr. Chairman? Right, we ain't going to have three chairs now. <laughs> Just ask the question. <laughs> Please don't be mad at me. Don't hate me. Okay. I'm asking the question. I, I got you, honey. I got you. Mm -hmm. uh, Chair, we'll acknowledge you. Uh, what's the read the motion again? Yeah, the motion is a uh, motion by Judge Johnson, seconded by Ms. Henry, to add a charter requirement for residency for the candidate to provide it at least once a year, no later than June 30th, to provide a legal address to the city clerk. And the amendment was to have a the proof of residency. And we didn't get to Judge Johnson. She talked about uh, school. No, that, was the original, yeah. that was the original motion. Am, proof I correct, of residency. am I correct, Mr. Attorney? That's the motion I'm going to vote on. Okay. Let's vote, please. I'm sorry. You have a question. Go ahead. That's a question. Oh, we're going to add that in? No, we ain't, we ain't discussing this. Okay. On this issue now. You all right? Okay, let's vote, please, by show of hands. Okay, any nays? No nays. Two nays. Any abstentions? One abstention, one nay, mm -hmm. and eight yays. Anyone else in two point? Yes, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Crane. I'd like to make a motion that we include in section uh, section two point one one uh, and add. Item I, where we give um, some teeth to H, which is proof of residency, to include the acceptable uh, document that will serve as proof of current residency. Second. Do you have an uh, example of those documents there? Do you have a suggestion? Um, I don't have a, do a document that I'm referencing, but I am yielding to the counsel of our vice chair, who is a very qualified attorney who's familiar with contract language probably to the extent uh, that exceeds mine. I'll yield to her if that's acceptable, sir. Thank you. I'm currently looking up school residency requirements um, and that language as well. Uh, can we? Why don't we do this? Well, yeah, let's table that, Mr. Crane, and give everybody some back. Give everybody an example. Uh, give an example of what that should be. I will draw the motion. Sir. Okay, thank you, sister. Okay, Ms. Ackerberry. Um, I had a comment on 2.10a, and it was just a question um, regarding should there be an at-large position? Because currently, all of the council members are from districts, and should we give consideration to someone who? Um, can look at the city holistically uh, to represent all those interests in conjunction with the part-time um, district representative, council members, and the mayor. Mr. Mr. Attorney, is that something that the council can do, or is that something that has to be taken up by the legislature for at large seats? We're making recommendations, recommendations. to the charter yeah. right now. Made recommendation for at large seats, but let me just go back to that because, it's, like you said, you write the it is a recommendation. So uh, I'll just not ask that question. If it comes back, then it can go up to them as a recommendation, and they can decide. Anyone else? Ms. Jordan. Ms. Jordan. Um, yeah. We're in discussion. Okay. Uh, as it relates to residency. I know we talked about the continuation once they're elected that we verify that, but I think we need to look at B to even be elected or considered to run for office in the city of South Fulton. We need to bring that same language in section uh, 2.10B because right now it's just very vague. 
And so I think we need to do it on both ends. Once you are to become considered or to be considered elected, we need to have you prove residency. As we've stated, we'll add the language, whether it's a lease, a phone bill, electric bill, that's in B, to be considered. Once you're elected, we're going to come back within a year and have you continue to, to, prove, to pro provide proof of residency, I which we've already voted on that. Ms. Yeah. Um, I think we jumped over 2.10A and that uh, recommendation. I didn't know if there, you needed me to make a motion on it. Um, 2.10A? Correct. Regarding um, adding a position for a council member at large. No, we, we, yeah, we said that it would be something, which is a recommendation. But I think we would need to vote on yeah. it, right? So is there a second? I, I so move that okay. the is there a second? be amended. Second. second. Properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Yes. Hearing none. Yes. Sorry. Uh, never mind. Um, The idea behind the creation of the city of South Fulton was born out of bringing the government closer to the people. If you all recall, and I'm sure you do, we were governed by county commissioners, and only one lived in the footprint of South Fulton, what became the city of South Fulton. People who lived all over the place. So I said that to say to have an at-large person who would have no uh, substantive power other than being on the, on the council, um, people won't yield to them for control or ideas of their respective districts. Um, it creates a problem. Now, let me also spend a moment to re reflect back on the original bill that went over to the, uh, to the Senate. When the Senate got this bill, the bill was stripped down. And in that original language before uh, Senator Albers changed it, it had all the seats as at large, including the mayor. You had to live in a, in a particular district, but you had to be voted on at large. That was a huge, huge outcry that went down to the state capitol and convinced uh, Senator Albers and the Republican contingency, contingent to change that because they controlled the bill at that point. This is their bill. This is not Roger's bill. It was all at large. The people spoke very, very loudly and clearly then that we have gotten closer to the people, closer to government by having a, a indi one individual, an individual, as a district representative. And it might be um, counterproductive to have an at large person. Let, uh, do we have a second that motion to split? Yes. Okay. Copy moved and second. If there's no further discussion, let's vote, please. And the motion is to add an at-large position as for a recommendation to the general assembly. Recommendation to the general assembly. To the, to the uh, delegation. Yeah. Let's vote, please. All the votes in? No. Oh, well, what, what, did he call for the, the, call for the vote? Yeah, he did. He read the motion. Excuse me. He read the motion. I called for the vote. We've had discussion. Okay. Just for clarification, I didn't hear anything about him reading council member at large. Which, what are we voting on, please? Right. What are we voting on? That's, that's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Ackerman. Yes. Yes. Mr. voted. In fact, let me just make the motion again while you read it. Am I on? It would be to amend 2.10A um, to add a part time mayor, seven part time, eight part time council members. Um, and one of those part time council members would be an at large member rather than being elected from a district. The rationale behind that is sometimes I think council members do get heavily vested in their district um, and may not be able to look at the city as a whole and how it works um, within the city as a whole. So that at-large position, that would hopefully be their responsibility to look at 
how things impact the entire city and work with the various district representatives. I have a question. Go ahead. So does the ACE um, at large position have their own district or do they have, are they a super uh, council member that oversees all of them? What, how, what, what does that mean? So it works like it does in any other city council. You have district representatives and there's usually an at large uh, representative that the council has that looks at the, you know, focus for the entire city. So they're not a super council person. They have the same voting powers and privileges that the other council people have, but they're just looking at it more holistically for any issues, votes that come up. For so they have their council. own district? The city. They, they're, so they're over the whole city, yeah. and they like an oversight. Uh, they micromanaging everybody no. else in the city. I'm just asking. No. I, I, I'm just saying. So Atlanta City Council, they have at-large members. Uh, Fulton County Commission, I believe, is an at-large member. I think Marvin Aronson is the at-large member. He's not the chairman. Okay, well, the chairman is. So it's, it's not to be a super voter on the council, but it's to have someone that can look at things more holistically for the entire city so that if a council uh, issue affects just one, affects the entire city, there's someone there that's looking at it. Last okay, question, Mr. Change, Chairman. I'll entertain a motion for, I mean. Last chairman, Mr. Uh, question, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let me. Is that the same me, as a city manager? Chairman, not recognize you. I'm sorry. I'm going to put my microphone All right. No. Uh, go ahead. And then you. Okay. I, I mean, benchmarking us when we're using an example as like the city of Atlanta, we have two different forms of government, both on the legislative and the executive side. So I understand what has taken place in the past about who was in positions when you talk about the seven part time council members. But I, I wouldn't want to use an assumption that because of how things operated initially, that that's not a good form of governance. So I'm, I'm not in favor of adding another par, uh, council member because I don't know and understand which district that would represent, nor am I in favor of a council member at large. You have seven part-time council members who should be concerned about the total city period. It's not, in my opinion, I would think just because they didn't operate that way, that's not the purpose of them being elected. I yield my time. Thank you. Again, I'm, I'm not in favor of adding an eighth part-time council member because I don't know what district that person would represent, nor a council member at large to be uh, in that perspective because practice and, and, and actual uh, process are two different things. You should practice in the perspective, and this was meant to have part-time council members operate in the fashion where they cared about the entire city. So to use a rationale to have a council member at large associated with that to deal with all of the city, that's asinine in my opinion. Uh, I have two more people that will move on. Is it my turn now? Um, yeah, I have two more people that will three. move on. Three. Mr. Crane, it's up four. Mr. Chairman, you think you're coming back to me. I'm coming back to you. Okay. I second that emotion for Mr. Taggart. I do not agree that this is the, in the best interest of the city of South Fulton. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me make sure Ms. Taggart is moving on. I commented on the motion, Ms. Mayor. I mean, I'm sorry. Mr. Edwards. Uh, I concur with uh, Mr. Taggart's uh, motion. I don't think we, it would be beneficial 
for the city to do an at-large position because we cannot assume that whoever fills that position will have the city best interest in mind regardless of whether you and I are around to see that. And so we don't need to make an assumption that someone would act for the benefit of the city and not in their own best interest. So I would have to conclude with Mr. Taggart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to just make a couple of comments. Just for, um, well, I, I don't know if you're still doing this, but each council member used to have an assistant that would help them if they uh, got bogged down with their work or whatever. Are they still doing that? Yes. Okay. So I think that might help with the uh, at-large uh, portion of that. Um, if, if there's something that needs to be done, they, they have an assistant that can, can help them. Uh, and we'll yeah. be getting down to that also. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, Mr. Clark, there was any motion on the floor? Y yes, actually, Mr. Crane. I saw Mr. Crane. Was there any motion on the floor? Yes, it was, and actually I need clarification because I recorded the second as Mr. Herring initially, and I think you just spoke against the motion to add a part-time, I mean, a uh, at-large uh, position. So you want to withdraw your second? I, I'll withdraw that second in order to support Commissioner Tackett. Okay. So we have a motion without a second at this point. Okay, well, we don't have that. Let's, let's continue the discussion. Listen, we, we're at 7.30. We'll be cognizant of that. I'd like to get through as much of this as we can. Okay. I know y'all been working all day. Okay. Now you want to you go home? Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, here's one. And while we're talking about this, Mr. Clerk, Sorry. while we're talking about this, you know, we've had situations where uh, council people have left and uh, to do other things, to pursue other selected bodies, and have left districts open, all right? A lot of people have come and said, well, we don't have anybody to, in our district, you know, to help us out. Now, now personally, my personal thing is, if there's nobody in, in that district that is open, if the mayor is at large, yeah, they got one, all right? He just slides over there and do that. Uh, but there's another, there's another thinking that when one is in that predicament, that I think it's council could appoint someone to be over there. Yep. He's not elected. I'm just putting it out there what people are telling me. It's a discussion, okay? And uh, I'd like to have a look. i have some comments on that. What happens? What do you think should happen when one – now, the other part of that, too, is if a person assumes another office, if he qualifies in time, am I correct, Mr. Mr. Clerk, that that, that that particular district would not be in harm's way for, for, for a long period of time? Yes, I, I think you're referencing Section 2.12, and uh, the, the, the line is 12 months left in the term or not. So if, if there's more than 12 months left in the term, then there has to be a special election. If it's less than 12 months before the end of the term, then the council can ap appoint. Yeah. I think what, what you're referencing is the situation we're in now where we have a uh, vacancy and over a year left in the term. So uh, a special election uh, will be held currently in November. But uh, there is some concern about the time from when the resignation occurred in March until November, that length of time, um, there being a vacancy in the council district. Um, what do some, some cities do it differently, um, but that's how our charter is set up. Right, y'all, we don't have that on, on that. Let me get her, then I'll come to you. I think we really, that's a bit. That was a very good um, idea. Uh, I think we should have an interim, an interim person to be in that spot until we could have. Who would that interim person be? Um, that, you gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, some somebody from that district definitely. 
we would have to have somebody from that district. You know? And I was thinking that maybe the council, the city council, could uh, get together and choose somebody. Well, let me say this to you. They did talk about somebody from the district, but they also put in the fact that if you do accept that, you cannot run for that seat. If you, and let's say if I get Joe Blow from District 7, all right, and we'll put him in there. If he accepts it, he can't run for the seat. He takes an unfair advantage of that. So that was just put out there to you. So. Uh, let, me, let me get Mr. Crane, then I'll get Mr. Taggart, and then I'll get Ms. Joy. Mr. Heron. spoke when he said the council can, <coughs> but Charlie didn't say the council can. He said the, the, the council shall. They shall. That, that takes away all ambiguity because they don't have an option. Um, if, if the lady said they shall do a certain thing, then we should hold them to that expectation. But as it relates to a general person, I say have no qualms at all in adding uh, uh, taxation with that district, as we all know, was on the floor. That district has been open to now. There's been taxation and no representation. And it's disagreed with that the council decided not to have a special election before November. They had opportunities for the winter finance months and months ago for those people. And so if the mayor and the mayor is voted at large, he wasn't elected to be a district representative. We don't need to ask him to do those things. In cities around us, you might call it a sister city. That was a person who had called a case. And the city council put a person in on an interim basis, um, trusting that they would do the same thing that an elected person would do, and that would be represent the people. I don't think it's our place today to sit here and prejudge what a person may or may not do. Because every person on the city council can have that same scrutiny imposed on them any given day, or they actually make that person. I think we ought to put forth the language in the, in the document, if it's not already there. And I think that we ought to hold the council accountable to conform with it. Here's a question, just one question before I yield the floor, Mr. Chair. When did that seat come available or seat open officially? Now, that's where your answer lies. Yes, I, and actually, <laughs> actually uh, with all due respect, just wanted right. to perfect the record. Um, the seat became vacant on March 11th uh, um, 2022. of mm -hmm. 2022, okay. and state law uh, with regard to special elections only allows special elections to occur on three dates, right. March, May 24th primary, and November. So... We were within the 90 days of the uh, time limit that the state allows uh, for an election to be called, so we couldn't make the May 24th. Thus, the only other option was November 8th. When did that seat, um, when did the term expire on that seat? Uh, December 31st, 2023. Okay, so it's well over 10 months. That's correct. Right. And, and you have to qualify in time. You qualify on the last day. That throws everything off, Mr. Frank. All right, yeah. And so, I, well, I just didn't want you to think that the council did anything because we had a person that qualified on the last day of the election, and that cost us money. Those dates that um, occurred then, was, it, it's important for me to correct the record. Sure. Um, that, that was important. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Ms. Joy, I'll give you a look. I, I withdraw my hand. Okay. I think, Mr. Heron, did you have something? <laughs> well, I'm kind of confused of where we are at the moment. So could we read whatever motions that are currently on the floor of the discussion? No motion. Discussion. Uh, discussion. A discussion on uh, currently, uh, I think the mayor brought up for discussion. Uh, the, the, yeah, actually, the I'm sorry, the, the, right. the chairman, the former mayor, uh, he brought up vacancies in office in terms of the situation we're in now. How should we address that in 2.12? Mm -hmm. That's what's on the. Uh, floor right now for discussion. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair? Uh, go ahead and then I'll get uh, Vice Chair. No problem. I just, um, you know, Section 2.12 says 
that uh, the general laws in the state of Georgia, are we, are we saying that from your example that the current body is, has not operated under the general laws of the state of Georgia? And this, as, this is as it relates to, I'm just saying in general, to the fact that the person, the, the office is vacant. Yeah. Have we not operated in the general laws in the state of Georgia? Okay. Mr. Chair, you want to answer? I'm, I'm not quite sure according to, to what law you're referring to. And Jermaine, to the vacancy of the position for the city of South Fulton. The, the city has simply had no vacancy. The question is, are we okay with 2.12C staying as it is, understanding that currently, in this current situation, the council has not made the appointment for the unexpired vacant term? But are we okay with keeping it and hopefully encouraging the council to make an appointment according to the term? So it's my understanding the council can't make the appointment because there's more than 12 months Correct. remaining on that term. Correct. Right. So that is, it has to be a special election. And from what I'm hearing from the clerk, we are in accordance with the law because the election will be held at the next date available to hold the election per the statute. So that's your, if the person who had that seat. Repeat that, please, again, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I couldn't hear you. We were saying that if he had qualified, if the person qualified for the next term in May. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yeah, it had to be 90 days before right. May 24th. Then he could have been on the, the upcoming, ballot. yeah, ballot. But that did not happen. So it pushed us over into the next deal, and, of course, it's going to cost us money. I was under the impression that we uh, chose not to put that position on the ballot because it was costing us money. And if that's the case, I don't know if that's true or not, but in my opinion, that's a disservice that we're doing to the constituents who have gone for X amount of days without representation. Regardless of what the cost of it is, that's just a cost of doing business. So, two things here. One is we have a clear understanding as to why we got in this situation, okay? And number two thing would be, you know, as if it ever comes up again, how do we handle it? That's what I'm looking for now. Excuse me. Uh, you still have the floor. So, I still have the floor, and I don't know if I need to make a motion or not, but moving forward, if a position becomes vacant, we have the constitutional duty to make sure that as quickly and expeditiously as possible, we get that position filled. And I think that's what we're doing. As quickly and expeditiously, based I, on when that. I, I would only say uh, we're, we're governed by state law in this regard. Um, so um, OCGA 5014, um, you know, it, it, it clearly for a special election, it spells out specific days that you can have a special election. Yeah. Um, Clearly. So, yeah. so if, if, if the vacancy doesn't occur um, 90 days before a primary, then the special election can be held. So I, I just want to make sure that we understand that uh, we're guided by state law, uh, which, which supersedes the charter. At, at the end of the day, still if I have the floor, Mr. Chairman, um, state law, of course, <coughs> governs us, but we have still the responsibility and the duty 
within that time frame to make sure that those positions get filled. We have the jurisdiction to do that. How do we do, I, I'm, I think I'm looking for, how do we do that? I mean, do we <laughs> find somebody or, do an appointment. or do an appointment? How do, how do you all, how do you all, excuse me, how do you what is your suggestion as to what, how we do what you just said? I'm talking to her. Yeah. Tell her I'm talking to her. Excuse me. Tell her I'm talking to her. Excuse me, Miss Henry. Miss Henry. Miss Henry, I'm sorry. Mr. Crane is in my ear over here. I'm gonna let y'all know for the record. Yes, sir. Yeah. I was looking for some. <laughs> I was looking for a suggestion to do what you say we need to do. How do we accomplish that? So, in my opinion, again, we adhere by state law, whatever that is, the 90-day time frame. But as soon as that's up, we move forward with our ability to do what we need to do um, from, from a uh, local municipality um, perspective. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair, and then I'll get uh, Ms. Hackaberry. To rectify this current situation or, or if it may happen again, are we open to the possibility of allowing the city excuse council? Excuse me, excuse me. Too much going on. Let's, let's give the respect to the speaker. Go ahead. Are we open to the possibility of a city council appointment until the next election as an interim with the condition of it can or can't run, but at least something in place to allow that this district be represented? I'm open to that, that absolutely. So I Excuse move. Me. She still has the floor. So if the, if it is the will of this body, I move that we amend 212B to reflect that the city council can appoint an interim council person for the duration of, for the term until the next legal C. Okay, so I, I amend that to section 2.12C will be amended to reflect that the council can appoint an interim council person until the next election. Instead of suspension, absolutely. Is that your second? Second. I second. Which second are you representing? Okay, all right. Property moves and second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, I have a question. So, the language that's already in Section 2.12, and this is for a judge, good friend, uh, it is, it, what language is different from what's already here in terms of that's germane to your motion? Section B refers no, to... No, C. C. I, know, I know, but Section B uh, refers to the a suspension. suspension. Yes, I'm, I'm with you with that. So, take, so taking that same language from the suspension and allowing the council to make an appointment until the special election. So we're saying to substitute the word term as opposed to suspension. Correct. Okay. That makes sense. All right. I think I, uh, I saw Ms. Ackerberg. Um, I just have a question for the city attorney, and I don't know if you know the answer because I don't have the code in front of me. Under the election code, does it have any language um, regarding vacancy in office, or is it just solely about how to conduct the elections and when they must be held. From my recollection, as you said before, it's solely about the uh, special elections for certain uh, city guards and city managers. The city is not a suspension. It's a suspension of certain uh, city employees. From my recollection. Okay. Judge Johnson, let's revisit 212B. We probably need to keep that there and then move down to C, where it says uh, if a position becomes vacant. Because uh, I'm thinking that we're going to have to do something with B. We're probably going to have to... Uh, 
the motion was that it leave. Yes, yes. You see the uh, you see where it says a uh, suspension of of the mayor's office, Sus suspension from the office of the mayor or council. We need to keep that there right for right now because we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna have to do something with that. So why don't we drop down to C in the event that the office of the mayor or the council shall become vacant? That's what we need right there because that's where we want the city council to do an interim, okay? Did that make sense to you? And it's already oh, I'm here. sorry. May I respond? Go ahead. To, to your you point. Her, you to um, <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Chair. Are you finished? Yeah, I was listening to okay. Judge Johnson. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you for the recognition. In response to your inquiry, perhaps we put the language upon the suspension or vacancy of the office of mayor or council. But that says no. that in C. Well, it's right here in C. It says it in C. C says that you have to do an election. But it, it does doesn't not. refer to the time. It doesn't refer to an appointment until the election. Maybe. So, Maybe we can revise some of that chairman. instead of doing B. Because as I said, we're going to have to expound on B because that's some information that we really need to be looked at closer eventually. Mr. Chairman, what do you think about that? Okay. Mr. Chairman. You, had, you actually had the floor. Are you finished? That's one. I yield. Oh, yield to who? Mr. Taggart. Here we go. Mr. Taggart, go ahead. It's not his turn. Oh, she's giving me the remainder. Okay, go ahead. But doesn't it already say that in C? Okay. That it says if such vacancy occurs within 12 months of the expiration of the term of the office, the city council of those members remaining shall appoint a successor for the remainder of the term. Mm -hmm. It already states that perspective about the term. I just think it's, it maybe need to be broken up into maybe two sections to make it very clear. Because then, however, it doesn't read in terms of how it should have. It maybe it needs to have a section B. So, Madam Vice Chair, I agree with you in terms of what you're saying. It just probably needs to be called out more. But it's that the, the language is already there, to be honest. Mr. Taggart, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say uh, to Mr. Taggart's point, that section he's reading uh, in C speaks to 12 months, under 12 months. Then the council has the ability to uh, appoint. If it's more than 12 months, there, there's nothing in there that allows them to appoint. It says within. Within, 12 within. so 12 months or less. Or less. Or less. So right now it's 12 months or more. So there's nothing in the, in the section that allows the council to appoint if it's more than 12 months. It says a special election must be held. And I think uh, Judge Johnson is trying to add a section 12 months or more the ability to appoint. Or more. Or more. Or more. Mr. Taggart still has the floor. Okay. Uh, this way. Okay. Go ahead. The little troublemakers on this thing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I agree uh, with the Vice Chair and to Mr. Taggart's uh, um, <laughs> comments. The language already is there. So in my mind, if there's a vacancy that's more than 12 months, that's a problem. So what this is saying is, and B, if you're suspended, this is what the city council can do. And C, if there's a vacancy for something else aside from suspension, mm -hmm. the council has the ability to appoint somebody within 12 months. If they have not appointed somebody within 12 months, in my opinion, that's a problem. So if we want to say 12 months or more, then I'm willing to make that motion. However, what, what we're saying here in this charter already addresses the needs of the vice chair. Mm -hmm. is, is there a motion on the Mr. Chair. Just a minute. What is it? Yes, I, I actually had uh, your original motion was speaking to 2.12C to reflect that the city council can appoint an interim council member until their next election can be held. Is what I recorded for Judge. Yeah. Move uh, and second by who? 
uh, Judge Johnson is second by Mr. Herring. Okay. Now, in the, uh, really the most, and so uh, Ms. Henry is making a substitute motion that in 2.1.2C, we can say if such vacancy occurs within 12 months or more of the expiration of the term, the city council has the ability to do what they need to do. Do I have a second? I have a motion on the second, on the substitute. No, that, that's my motion. No, she motion. said she, that's, it's a substitute motion. Is there a second on the substitute? Second. It's properly moved and second. You can't, have, you, you can't have within 12 months or more. It's either within 12 months, right, or it's not. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, substitute motion. Mr. Clerk. Let's just second it. So the, the, the distinction that is 12, 12 months or more, yeah, I, I would have to. Yeah. Wait a minute. I got to get these motions off the floor. Y'all making motions everywhere now. So uh, the, go ahead. You want to say something? Okay. So the, so the substitute's on the floor. All right. Would you, Mr. Clerk, read the substitute motion, then we'll vote. From my understanding, uh, Ms. Henry's trying, wants just to add that such vacancy occurs within 12 months or more of the expiration of the term of that office. The city council or those members remain shall appoint a successor for the remainder of the term. All right, let's vote, please. Mr. Chair. Mr. Crane. I'm sorry, I just want to speak on this issue. As it relates to 2.12b, which is specific to suspension, I think that we're going to run into a constitutional issue if um, the mayor or any city council person find themselves suspended and we put an interim person in with language saying that they'll be able to sit there until that term expires. If they have a case before the court and it's adjudicated and they have a year left on their term, they have every right to go back to their seat. This proposal circumvents that, number one. Number two, it might serve a better purpose because it's been expressed on this council today that the problems that we face today came about because someone qualified on the last day and didn't give us a real window of opportunity. We may find ourselves better off if we say if a vacancy occurs within 18 months. So that, that would fix that problem because... We wouldn't, we wouldn't have this, this 90 day issue if we said if they become vacant with 18 months left, then they can appoint somebody. Because that person who has resigned, this is not dealing with a suspension. A person who has officially decided or they've been removed from office, they're not coming back, which is substantially and materially different from a person who's suspended who may come back. I think this is, we're going to find some constitutional issues by putting in language that prohibits them from coming back because we put in language and a person to fill that spot until the term is fine. I know that there's some arguments that can be made left and right on this one, but I feel that we need to go to the vote. If you like it, vote it up or down on the substitute. Mr. We'll Chairman, I have a comment to his comment. Last okay. comment and we'll vote. Thank you. Um, while I respect Mr. Crane's position and his comments, B and C are two total different things, and we're mixing apples and oranges. And section 2.12B is talking specifically about suspensions. And once somebody gets suspended, we have the, the city council has the ability to appoint a successor, period. Once we get to 2.12C, that's talking about a vacancy. So back to my original uh, uh, motion, if 12 months is not enough for you to find somebody, we're going to say 12 months or more. Okay. Um, but B and C are two total different things, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Let's vote, please, on the substitute motion. 
we want to read it again? Read the substitute motion, then we shall vote. This is a mo substitute motion by Ms. Henry, seconded by Mr. Taggart, to add in section 21-2C, in the event that the office of the mayor or council member shall become vacant, the city council or those remaining shall order a special election to fill the balance of the unexpired term of such official, provided, however, that such vacancy occurs within 12 months or more, adding the language or more of the expiration of the term of office, the city council or those members remaining shall appoint a successor for the remainder of the term. Let's vote, please. Let's vote. Call for the yeas. Hand, call for hand. What is that? Yeas, I have one. One, two, three. I have a comment. No, you got to vote. Oh, let's vote. <laughs> What is this one? This is, this is the nays. We got three okay. yays and one, two, three, four, five nays. And Mr. Heron, are you abstaining? Yes. Oh, you're four? Okay. So we have four. You're, I'm sorry, you're? Yes? No. Oh, no. So that's, that's four to six. Four yays, six nays. Mr. Chair. Just one moment, please. Let me iron this stuff out of here. All right. Now, Mr. Kirk, when you're saying, would you read the original motion so we can vote on it? The original motion was a motion by Judge Johnson, seconded by Mr. Heron, uh, to amend Section 2.12C uh, to add the, to reflect that the city council can appoint an interim council member until the next election can be held. Let's vote, please. By show of hands. I show of hands. Yes, first. Yes. We have one, two, three, four, five. Nays. Oh, I'm sorry. You were. Yes. Okay. Okay. Nays. We have one, two. Mr. Crane, Ms. Henry, and abstent. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Jordan. That's three. And abstentions. Okay, y'all making it hard on me. Okay. But that patch was for. Does that pass? Yeah, I, I had five yays, so that passes. I'm going. We're going to try to get through some more of this as much as we can. Uh, we're still in uh, 2.11. Any further things? I, I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, point of order: uh, We made a uh, a, a uh, vote back on 2.1. Zero H, that was the proof of residency, and we when we made that vote, there was a motion on the floor and a second on the floor. We didn't vote on the second, uh, the substitute motion. I'm sorry, there was a motion and a substitute. The substitute motion was not voted on. We went back to the original motion and voted on that. So I want to make sure that we clarify that. We tabled one, didn't we, Mr. Clerk? We didn't table it. We voted. I'm asking a question of the clerk. I'm sorry, you said from the last meeting? This meeting right now, today, uh -huh. on 2.1, I'm sorry, 2.11H is what we were adding. There was a motion and a, and, and a, um, a substitute motion on the floor. The substitute motion was not voted on. You went back and voted on the original motion, and I'm saying we need a point of clarification for that. My recollection was the second was withdrawn. That's what yeah, I, that I was my recollection. Who withdrew it? I'd like to read that back. This one right here. Oh, you were referencing that, the On the proof of residency. Proof of residency, yes. 2.11H. Yes. Can you just yes. read that back had, for clarification? I, yeah, mo motion three, I had a motion by Taggart, second by Henry, and I had that the motion was withdrawn by Mr. Taggart. Right. You withdrew it? Okay. Just double check it. Thank you so much Thank for that. You. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Mr. Clerk. All right. Uh, let's take try to get. Two or more of these in before we'll 
Uh, any other ones? I got one. We I move to adjourn. Second. Properly move to second in discussion. All those in favor? Let it be known that we, we come back at our next meeting is on bottom of your uh, Tuesday, August 16th, and it's at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, and let me, let me say something before we Chair, where, where do you think we should, when we come back, where should we start? Where, where well, we're start still at on 2.1. We're still at 2.11. Okay, so you want to start yes, it? Yes, I mean, we've been kind of going everywhere. Okay. But as long as it's inside 2.11. Yes, sir. Um, no and let me, let, me, let, me say, let me say this to y'all. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to hear and conduct a meeting if everybody's talking. I would ask that we think about that when we come back uh, the next time. Because some of the motions just get grounded in conversation, and, and we, we really don't want to do that. So I would ask you all to make sure that I will acknowledge you and make sure those who I have acknowledged that they get the respect of being able to, to have their discussion. That's all I ask you. Uh, we don't want to be here all night uh, with this. I hope we can get through this and maybe go into – you might be able to go into four when we – Hopefully. You guys still got a lot in this, though. All right? Mr. Chair. And if we could, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Not. You're still talking. I'm sorry. And if we could hold our comments. Sometimes we get a little redundant. It's okay. Everybody has the right, everybody has the right to speak, and I will, I will give you that right. But let's be in the scene. We got a lot of work to do in a short time to do it. Let's make sure we get through as much of this stuff as we can, okay? Now, go ahead. I just have a suggestion which might help us move things along. Even if people can't uh, edit in the SharePoint, if they can send their suggestions by email um, and just delineate them. So that way, I guess we can all be prepared way. when we come to this meeting yes. to discuss them and we're not doing it as we go along. I mean, I understand some things will come up, but if you can't, Edit the document, just send the email with the suggestions so we can be prepared to discuss them. It's important how we got here, it's even more important where we're going. So please keep that in mind. Mr. Chair, can I make a comment, please? Yes. I'd like to just congratulate this, this group. Uh, we've done a great job tonight, so thank you for your leadership, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair. Yes. Very, very good uh, meeting. I'd like to make that comment. Thank you. Right. We'll get there. All right. Did we vote on jury? Do you want to give her a turn? Can we go on that? She did. All right. She had a